David, let me start with you. Um, I guess it's an obvious question why banks are looking at their exposure to Evergrande. What do we know, though, about these projects in Hong Kong and what these exposures are? Yeah, Dave, it's, it's very significant. On the one hand, you think, well, it's just a couple of projects in Hong Kong, and, you know, is that a big mm. deal? But it just adds more pressure on this company. And you've got some very big banks, some of the biggest mortgage lenders in Hong Kong saying, we're not going to touch this project. That includes HSBC, but also, interestingly, uh, Bank of China. So there's a state-owned bank that's having some reservations about uh, Evergrande. You add to that, uh, other banks are pulling back some of their credit. We've seen some provincial governments freeze some of their uh, deposits. So it's all sort of adding up to more problems for Evergrande. Hold on a second. I just want to break some lines here now on Evergrande. Timely. Very timely. Uh, Evergrande says it has resolved this dispute with Guangfa Bank. Uh, this is something, uh, I guess it is a Chinese bank, though, uh, not related to the four GF. that uh, we were talking mm. to uh, about, as David has just mentioned here. But again, we continue to see... I guess the, 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 the company trying to defend itself and trying to kind of do a bit of damage control here right now. Daniel, I was going to ask you about the impact of this, these Hong Kong banks now stopping mortgages. You're saying that Evergrande has to do something radical now. What is radical enough to ease investor concerns? I think the radical action could be either um, they invite some SOE as a strategic investor, or uh, they do more aggressive asset disposals to make the market believe they have sufficient money uh, to regain some confidence of the market. Okay, uh, David, let me bring you back in and let's continue that trail of thought there. Can Evergrande pull out of this, looking at the options that they have in terms of li liquidity? Let's start with that. Let's not even talk about solvency first. Yeah, I mean, look, I think what I would say is that the founder, Hui Kayan, has been in this predicament before, and he's always been able to pull out of it. Yeah, he has a lot of friends in Hong Kong and elsewhere who helped him out. Other times there have been state entities that have, that have uh, helped him. They, they're selling a lot of assets. Um, so I wouldn't count them out. Certainly the market is suggesting uh, that they have some grave concerns, though. Stocks down about 50 percent. The bonds, as you mentioned, once you get below 50, uh, 50 cents on the dollar, that is clearly a sign of distress. So the, the market is suggesting they will not pull out. However, I think that the, the company has been here before, has been resilient. And the question, of course, is does China want Evergrande to fall? That's the biggest question here. That That's the question. In fact, Daniel, I'll bring you back in in a couple of seconds on that thought here. Let me just break more lines as it pertains to the Guangfa Bank uh, issue here that Yvonne was pointing out. So Evergrande, this is according to Dow Jones here, uh, will be suing the bank over this asset freeze. Again, Daniel, we talk about liquidity. We talk about just, just grabbing uh, any sort of funds from wherever sources where available. You talked about some of these options, whether that's an asset sale, whether that's discounting some of these projects. Some of these projects have been halted in some places in China. You know, David was just talking about does China want or, or is China going to step in the way of Evergrande failing? That goes into the options that you outlined there, Daniel. What do you think among those options is the most likely scenario for Evergrande? In a more likely scenario, my colleague, um, Andrew Chen, he did some research on that. He thinks uh, SOEs are more likely to come in uh, given the size of Evergrande. Because uh, Evergrande's uh, top line, I think contract sales in first half, accounted for around like 0.8% of uh, China's GDP, according to his mm. uh, estimation. So that is a more likely scenario. And we have seen an example of SOE coming in to save the, a developer, uh, which is Green Town. It was um, acquired by uh, China uh, Communications Construction, which is an SOE. And an other scenario is more likely that no one is coming in and Evergrande has to sell its assets. Uh, we have seen an example of that, which is uh, Thailand Wanda uh, happened in 2017-18 kind of period. So, Dale, I I'm wondering what, what, what this all means for the economy. You mentioned from mm. your, your colleague saying that this does make up uh, some portion of the GDP side of things uh, when it comes to China. Can can China afford to let Evergrande fail? 
I think it is whether it wants to take this uh, volatility. If we look at um, Kaisers before in 2015, it basically shut down the capital market for like six months. Uh, I think Evergrande's impact would be much bigger and more impactful. It seems um, every, I mean, many investors, many funds are involved in this um, developer and also a lot of lenders are involved as well. So the impact would be much, much bigger.